In this video, we're going to talk about dimensioning and working with relationships in sketches. While sketching in Solid Edge is similar to SolidWorks, dimensioning can be significantly different. So let's take a look by starting a simple sketch. Sketch a line and key in a length of 2.5. By default, Solid Edge doesn't add the keyed in dimension to the line, but I've changed a setting that allows it to do just that. That setting can be found on the IntelliSketch options, Auto Dimension tab, Automatically Create Dimensions for New Geometry, and make sure that it's set to the Only When Geometry is Created with Keydian Values option. From here I want to keep sketching, so I'll toggle A to get a tangent arc, and I'll use the References to get Horizontal Tangent Point, and then more inferencing, and I'll finish this off with another tangent arc. But notice that the second tangent arc is only tangent on one end. Solid Edge is putting red sketch relationship symbols directly on the affected sketch entities. So we've got a horizontal vertical symbol, and these circular symbols signify tangent relationships. If you want to turn off the display of the sketch relations, you can turn off the relationship handles, and that will toggle those off. But I think seeing them is fairly unobtrusive, and it gives you a lot of good information very quickly. Here we just have two endpoints that are simply connected. To create the tangent relationship manually, I first click on the tangent relationship, and then click on the entity that I want to move, and then click the entity to be used as reference. The sketch relations in the relate area will mostly look familiar to SOLIDWORKS users. The one that's different will be the horizontal vertical. Let's sketch some more lines and try this out. Remember with Solid Edge you press the sketch relation tool first and then the entity you want to apply it to. So I click on the horizontal vertical and then click on the line. The line is going to snap to whichever relation is closest. For this one, it'll snap vertical. And if I click on this one, I'm going to have a problem because it will overlap the horizontal line down here. You can select the sketch relationship symbols on the sketch entities if you want to delete them. You can also use Quick Pick, which is like SolidWorks Select Other, to pick a specific item if multiple items could be selected in the same area. Just hover your cursor over a group of items, wait for the right mouse button cursor to appear, and press the right mouse button. And then you can pick from the list. Okay, now let's look at some dimensioning scenarios. I'll use the smart dimension for most of the work I'm going to do, just like in SolidWorks. If I click on this angled line, Solid Edge is going to allow me to get the horizontal or vertical component of the dimension. To get a dimension that runs parallel to the line, I have to change the orientation of the dimension. And I can use the automatic setting in the Smart Dimensions properties for that. Automatic will follow the angle of the line. If I press A on the keyboard, this will also give me an angled dimension. In SolidWorks, we would click on two lines. So here in Solid Edge, I'll click on this line and this line. By default, Solid Edge is giving us a linear dimension between the endpoints of the line nearest to the points where they were selected. There are two ways to turn this into an angle dimension. One would be to use A on the keyboard as we did previously, and to switch back, I'll use A again. The other method would be to use the angle setting in the Smart Dimension properties. That will allow us to apply an angle dimension between these two lines. Let's draw a new line and use it as the basis for the direction of all of our new dimensions. I'm going to sketch a line and pick up the center of this arc by pressing C on the keyboard and also this arc by pressing again C on the keyboard. Click the line and convert it to a construction line. Next, use the dimension axis tool. Select the tool, then read the prompt bar. It says to click on a key point or a line, so I'm going to click on this line. Solid Edge now understands that this line can be used as a dimension axis. Let's try to apply a dimension using it as an axis. 
I'll click on this arc and this arc, and I'm getting a horizontal or vertical dimension between centers. But if I change the orientation to use the dimension axis, now the dimension will be parallel to that line. Solid Edge has a total of four colors for dimensions. Red dimensions are driving, like SolidWorks black dimensions, and display a lock icon. Blue dimensions are driven, like SolidWorks gray dimensions, and they display an unlocked icon. There are also orange dimensions, which are highlighted dimensions of any kind. Dimensions get highlighted by moving the cursor over them. Green dimensions are selected dimensions of any kind. If you click on a red dimension once, you can change its value. If you double click a red dimension, Solid Edge kicks you into the Edit Formula interface. Here you can rename dimensions, write formulas, and add comments. If you click a blue dimension once, it becomes selected. If you click on it a second time, it will allow you to change the value. But if you do change the value of a blue dimension, notice that the geometry doesn't change because it is not a driving dimension. Plus, Solid Edge adds an underline. The underline means that this dimension is not to scale. The orange and green colors also apply to highlighted and selected sketch entities. All sketch entities will be blue by default, unless you have the Relationship Colors option turned on, in which case fully defined sketch entities will turn black. Solid Edge only calls a line fully defined if both ends are fully defined. SolidWorks calls lines with only one end and the direction fully defined. Let's talk in more detail about the format and properties you can find in the Smart Dimension command bar. At the top, we can enable dimension style mapping and use various units from your standard. You can also choose to apply driving or driven dimensions or reset existing dimensions. You can also set your round off appropriately and Solid Edge has some advanced options that are available for tolerancing. We've looked at some of the orientation properties already, but let's go through these again. Horizontal vertical dimensions, we already know about by two points, will be when you select the endpoints of the dimension specifically. Use a dimension axis, we've talked about, and for automatic, it will choose what it thinks is best in various situations. For example, you can get aligned dimensions much more easily, and horizontal or vertical dimensions depending on the position of the cursor. Also, by default, a radius will be assigned to an arc, but you can change this to a diameter dimension if you have the need to do that. We've also seen that if you select an angled line, the angle orientation will allow you to apply an angled dimension more easily. And there are a couple of other options for your angle as well, such as major minor angle, and counterclockwise. Additionally, there are some more options that you can use for dimensioning. One of these in particular is tangent, and we can set that so that we can get the outside to outside dimension on this shape. You can select various tolerance types from the list in this drop down, apply an inspection dimension, use a prefix including any of the annotations or symbols that you want to use. You have prefix, suffix, superfix, and subfix. Additionally, if you have a tolerance type set, you can apply tolerance values for the type of dimension that is selected in the drop-down list. So the dimension command bar is very useful, flexible, and thorough. Thanks for watching.